Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Меня зовут Сергей. Hello, colleagues. My name is Сергей Гордечий. I'm director general of Sidrock. Um, today we are having the finals of the open source projects of school children and students, which was uh, held by a community with the support of various companies. This uh, contest lets uh, the young show what they have uh, developed and uh, participate in the open source community. Positive Technologies has joined forces with us to arrange the cybersecurity track. The idea behind it was that school children and students can present uh, their projects and uh, try to increase the level of security of open projects uh, by looking for vulnerabilities, uh, fixing them and improve them overall. Well, this hasn't happened, so that's our first attempt. On the other hand, more than 20 interesting projects uh, have been filed and the jury has picked five most interesting ones. Today, well, unfortunately, we don't have all the participants and we didn't quite manage with the online part of the presentation. Nevertheless, uh, today we'll hear about three projects. The Headsplit project, this is the modular platform to do a pen test, so you can code exploits and uh, use them. We also have a utility to restore information from RTTI, and this is to help in reverse development of software. And we also have a utility to simplify the life of the security experts and penetration experts, a Telegram bot to identify uh, audio deep fakes, and a crypt exploiter console piece of software based on modular programming. And this is for cryptography. Okay, the format. Our participants uh, will have a pitch session. The jury and all the participants will ask questions. And then the jury will kind of uh, provide their final verdict. And we'll have the great prizes as a result. Okay, let's start with you. So I believe that you have crypt exploit. That's great. Hello, my name is Andrei Restov, and my colleague is Alexander Kanavalov. And today we'll share with you an open source tool for cryptography tasks called Crypt Exploit. Some background. We are part of the school city of uh, games, and there we run into cryptography problems. To solve them, we need to use a lot of various scripts, algorithms, and tools. So we have accumulated them and decided to arrange them to speed up their use. And that's why we decided to code some software which would increase everything from our own handmade scripts to the well-spread solutions. When we have showcased um, our project, we have heard many questions, so we'll answer them now. What do you need to know? To use Crypt Exploit, you should have some basic knowledge of cryptography and some general understanding of the software use. So who needs it? The project can help any user and uh, developers in testing the services and identify vulnerabilities. How does it work? Well, Kibrisoid is an open source project uh, based on module coding, so any user can expand it easily. We have used Python as the key coding language. It's uh, well spread and quite easy to learn. And uh, we have 
also supported other programming languages for the functions of the modules. To standardize uh, the modules, we have developed uh, two templates for Python and for other programming languages. Now, there are several cryptographic modules connected to our project, like root encryption, RSI tool, and others. We believe that the project can be further developed by improving the API and adding new modules. We are open to hear your ideas, and we'll thank everyone to join the project. I'd like to thank you for giving us an opportunity to speak here. Thank you very much for your attention, and now we are ready to take your questions. The interpreter can hear the question. The answer, no. These are the next steps to add this functionality. Now you can use these modules one by one. But now we have all the shell commands uh, which work in the pipes. Well, indeed, Cryptosploit is a manager to use various cryptography tools. The question is of the mic. The answer. Okay, we can take hashcat. So when we want to pick a hash, we should know the type of hash, and we should remember all the flags of uh, hashcat. Using cryptexploit, this uh, problem will be solved instead of you. So you use as the input the word list for brute and the hash. And it will determine the type of the hash and will fix all the flags uh, for you. So this is to simplify the use of all tools. In this module, we use the open source library on hash. It is a very good library. Hello, everyone. My name is Ivan Nikolsky, and now I'm sharing my Hatsploit framework. I beg your pardon. What's amiss with the presentation? Thank you. Okay, what is Hatsploit? Why Hatsploit? Why I started developing it? Some background. What makes me think that my product should be used uh, instead of Metasploit? And why I decided 
developing it to replace this popular framework. Well, I believe uh, Metasploit is uh, hard to understand and uh, it's uh, missing a lot of documents. When I tried to code a module, I went to the Rx repository, so the key API, and I didn't find there any documents or some of the functions I needed. And if you go to the wiki or the Metasploit website, you can find there a lot of uh, difficult terminology, which will be hard to crack for a young pen tester. That's why they, well, like students who just start doing it, they cannot uh, code um, mo models for exploitation. The API is uh, quite entangled and difficult to get through. This is an issue of those Metasploits as uh, other frameworks. Well, when you have uh, a lot of functions bolted on each other and you have different configuration and split by the functions, the story isn't that good because you should bring the functions for payloads into the class payloads and not to any other class. Another issue is that the developers of this uh, framework have implemented uh, so one of the same function several times in um, so in several classes. And this is not right. You should use one implementation several times for a clearer API. And there are many subsettings uh, in the modules which you don't need. They make the code difficult to understand. And uh, for instance, my framework will determine on its own which options should be configured based on the target system. It does it without any serious problems so far. It uh, considers uh, all the finest details. There are also old ways there to send the payloads. So when I try to use Metasploit uh, to exploit one vulnerability, the payload uh, sending module mis mixed up the bytes, which made the payload impossible to run. Uh, frankly, I was uh, pissed off. That's why I decided to set my own method to send the payload method, which is universal for all the Unix-like systems as well as Windows the programming language. Well, initially Metasploit was uh, coded on Perl and then it was uh, recorded using Ruby. And I believe Ruby is not uh, as popular as uh, my language, Python. Well, okay, raise your hands if you have coded professionally using uh, Ruby and Python. Okay, the majority, I would say. Yeah, indeed. And now let's um, compare the popularity of uh, these languages taken from various sites. Okay, this is the Ruby popularity and the Python popularity. Okay, in red you can see Python, so, and uh, Ruby is uh, dark green, so you can see the difference. Okay, why Hatsploit? Okay, the code is straightforward. API the Metasploit is uh, quite entangled. So the idea was uh, to disentangle it. So I started with my API on Python from scratch, and the idea was to make it clear. High speed. Rational implementation of functions and algorithms sped up the framework which sped up the module launch generation of uh, payloads, their encryption and uh, sending. Automation. All the sub-settings are configured in an automated way inside the Hatsploit base, which makes... Okay, which helps you save the time in terms of configuration. The web interface. Okay, terminal is cool, but when you can see the picture, it's even better. That's why I decided to um, code the interface from scratch, which uh, has made uh, Hasploit much more beautiful and easier to understand. Just a few clicks and you are there. Documentation. Now I'm documenting all the function pretty thoroughly. I code uh, templates for modules, payloads, and plugins, and I comment on all the steps, and the beginners uh, will have an easy time trying to use it to code exploits for the contest and so on. Various interfaces, so the text version and the graphical version. 
the text interface is ready. It has all the functions and the graphical one is being developed. The goals of the project. Here they are. Number one is training to help the beginners code their own exploits in a convenient environment, which is easy to understand. High performance, high speed of modules and uh, a powerful arsenal. Now I'm coding models for various platforms, vulnerabilities, uh, CVEs, and I'm expanding the scope of all the modules. Here you can see the basic functionality. Here we are looking for the models exploiting the vulnerabilities in the Nordstroma web app. Then we select by ID, look for the options to be changed, then the host and port are set, then we determine the payloads which are available, then we install the payload, then we look at the encoders to work around the firewall or filtering, so we, we install it. This time it's a score for the X64 platform, and then we send the payload to the server through this vulnerability. Then the session opens, and here you can see the shell. So if you go out of it, this uh, session will be uh, saved. So you can re reload it and you can download the file and so on. So I have all the functions. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you for your pitch. Well, you said that Metasploit gives you a lot of unnecessary settings. What kind of settings are you talking about here? If it is all default set, we just uh, set the target. And uh, okay, you're talking about the target in the module? Well, I'm talking about uh, your comment that there are some unnecessary settings in Metasploit in the module configurations. Okay. What kind of configuration are, configurations are you talking about? Okay. In the Metasploit module, you can set the platform the module is targeting. Okay. An exploit of a platform, say Linux. And then for some reason, you need to pick the targets. I don't know why you need it. As a matter of fact, the framework can pick the payload it needs or the exploitation vector. So you will not have to identify each of them. I don't think it's necessary. Okay, I coded this model to exploit vulnerability in the Apple iOS, uh, iOS 10. When you click the link and, uh, you know, in the WebKit uh, bug uh, will reboot your device. It's already implemented. I looked at the model structure. There we have the platform, Apple OS, and then we have the target, Apple OS. I don't know why you need it, because uh, it will just uh, you know, complicate the picture. That's why I just have a couple of lines. This is one of the examples. Well, I have been uh, unhappy with the number of modules. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned the bad documents for Metasploit. Well, obviously, we all know that Metasploit stems from far ago, and this is a big project. Well, people would joke that Metasploit is one of the uh, biggest uh, rubby projects. Would you say that this can be the so kind of source of the project, and you'll face a problem, and your project will face the same problems when it grows. Uh, the more functions, the more resources you'll need. And to make it readable, well, the documents will have to be maintained in a readable format. And the second important thing is uh, documents uh, as a benefit of the new framework. Okay, this is an open source, so you can uh, cause improvement. You can improve uh, Metasploit's documents. Why are you not improving in the documents? Why are you coding your own product here? Well, 
I'll take the last question first. I believe that the Ruby syntax is much more difficult than the Python syntax. And the important thing to me was to recode Metasploit to Python. And then I started thinking about the negatives uh, I started fixing. And as for the documentation, so why I'm not improving the Metasploit documentation, well, just as any other open source project, well, apart from the documents, uh, well, we're talking about open source projects in general. So this is an issue of uh, many open source projects. So you can improve open source by code and documentations and translations. Indeed. Well, instead of adding documents to Metasploit, I decided to code a tool with um, fixed problems with its own set of documents. And the important thing as you mentioned, the problems of big open source projects, they're difficult to document, indeed. So, when you start develop an open source project, why not uh, document every function, meaning how it should be developed? So you don't bring it together later and document it, but uh, rather you do it from the outset. That's why I'm doing it. That's why my documents are more ex expanded. When I started implementing model system and the payload, I documented everything. I had an article on how you should call the models. And then I uh, changed this uh, with fixing the bugs. They think it's based on your enthusiasm. Well, Metasploit has been there for more than a dozen years. It's been recorded from one language to another. Now you are enthusiastic, and uh, you have answered this question, that the reason wasn't behind the documents, but rather the wish uh, to make it uh, good in a different language. So, some time when the project is growing, or maybe it's not growing, maybe because you don't have uh, enthusiasm or there can be some other issues, so it will be just another framework. Well, I don't think so. Metasploit started with the enthusiasm of the developers, HD Moore, the one who started developing it. But, you know, any tool like that can grow to become something bigger. So, and now if you believe that despite uh, all the differences, well, maybe they're not big, well, I believe that uh, the framework is going to develop in a different direction versus Metasploit. It will not be just a poor twin of Metasploit. It will be like that in terms of interface, but it will be completely different in terms of the structure of the code and of the exploits. And this will not be just some artificial difference to avoid uh, mixing them up. I believe this will improve their functionality and uh, will make it more convenient because the time is changing and uh, Metasploit uh, will be history. Okay, it might be advanced today. Indeed, I believe that it is advanced. But you know, times are changing. I will grow up, some guys will stop using Metasploit, uh, some people will want something new. And that's what I'm offering. Do you understand that Metasploit has been there for, uh, well, a lot of time, considering the growth and development of a generation, I would say. I believe it's there for about 15 years, yeah, dozens of years, indeed. So it has, it has been uh, time proven, you know? I mean, all these years, we've had the community which has been developing around Metasploit, and I don't think it's uh, time to forget about it. Well, I don't think we should forget about it. Well, I've mentioned that with time, maybe, it can be replaced by something different. And I believe I should mention one more thing. Well, Metasploit is uh, more for professionals. I mean, well, my personal experience. When I started dealing with CTF, I tried uh, to code a model in Metasploit. Maybe this wasn't uh, the best solution. Maybe I should have used some small Python-based script, and I failed. Well. Okay, if I was to blame, that would have been fine. Ask my colleagues whether they tried, and they did. And uh, the major issue I found there was uh, the difficulty in understanding the code. 
when they were looking at uh, other models, so they couldn't understand the code, because initially they were taught to use Python for programming, but not Ruby. And I believe that at, at this uh, moment, the goal is to provide a convenient uh, environment for the beginners, pen testers, and Metasploit can be uh, an environment for professionals, because it's uh, more for advanced experts. That's my impression at least. Do you agree? Well, I believe that's just a framework. Okay. You have mentioned another important thing, Ruby versus uh, Python. Have you considered uh, multi-canvas? Say again? Well, have you considered uh, Immunity Canvas? This is a Python-based framework for exploits. I haven't heard of it. Can you give me the title again? No, I haven't heard about it. I know only one framework that looks like uh, uh, Metasploit on Python. This is Routesploit. I haven't heard about it. Okay, it has quite a lot of uh, stars uh, at uh, GitHub. And when I tried to launch it, it was positioned as Metasploit for routers and uh, or routers and the Internet uh, of Things. But when I launched it, well, a lot of mistakes were shown, but when I fixed it, it didn't send payloads because it was used, uh, the method using the echo command, which uh, wasn't used uh, in the systems. So I believe they should have used the sending of payloads through printf or something else. And, uh, well, this is my experience. So maybe somebody else uh, managed. Well, I started to uh, Coordinate, considering the problems I found in Metasploit and um, analogs of it. Any other issues? Any other questions? Hello. Thank you. All of respect to you. A, a good uh, speech. I have a question. What about performance? So I believe you mentioned that uh, Metasploit is slow. I didn't say it was slow. I said that Headsploit is quicker because it's not uh, that bulky yet versus Metasploit. And also, well, I looked at the code of Metasploit. Well, I didn't kind of rewrite it. I coded similar functions, but I was doing it in a more rational fashion, like the algorithms. I coded them in such a way that they should work quicker. I looked at the time. And if you consider the speed of modules or modules to send payloads, you know that Metasploit stores modules in the database. It is connected, then you pick the module, right? So they have a database. We also have it, but it's quite straightforward. That's a file. And this makes the selection of payload or the module a quicker thing. You just uh, say, use the index or the title of the module to be picked in a second. In Metasploit, here the module is uh, complicated, like Nostrom, the one I recorded, which uses the Nostroma vulnerability. You pick it, it configures the payload and something else, I don't know what, and it spends more time doing this. Well, at point the module will be loaded within a um, split of a second, and for Metasploit, two seconds or one and a half seconds will be needed. Okay, thank you, but it becomes something bigger, it will be really cool. Thank you. One more question. We have the KSM Venom, so they can generate the DLL or exa file, or you can bring it to the shortcut. Do you have anything in your framework? Yes, indeed. And this has been implemented. And this has been implemented, but not as the uh, Venom. No, it's not Venom. It's, um, well, in a the API called uh, PEX, we have a module which generates uh, binaries for the PE, portable executable for Windows and for Mac, Mac OS, ELF, DLL, ESCO, the libraries and libs, the dynamic libraries for Mac OS. And this module works with all of this popular 
formats of uh, Excel files, and it can uh, wrap the shell code by this uh, executive file and can also introduce it in, into a ready binary. And so the clay for this model, I'm now coding it, it's under development. But if you want to generate a binary, well, it's there in the module, and we have uh, documents for this. And one more thing, if you want uh, to generate uh, the binary quicker, we have uh, modules, we have the hotspot module, which is called XLR generator. You just uh, bring the payload uh, there, and the encoder, if you need it, and the, and the format of the executive file is not needed. The platform will determine it, and uh, it will generate the binary. So all of that is done. Good. And if the method for avoiding, is there a method for uh, AV avoidance? We know that. Uh, you know, Metasploit, EXEs are detected. Well, actually, uh, encoders currently don't work this way. They are used to avoid filters. There are no solutions currently like that. But I'm working on an encoder that will, well, how do I put it? First of all, it will need to change you know, the, the places of the bytes, but at some point in time that might lead to an evasion um, method for AVs. And if there, if any arise, they would, of course, be added to the list for the antiviruses. So uh, every new method is usually included in the AV database. So avoiding AVs would probably be something that you need to keep secret. Thank you. With that, that's all. Thank you. Thanks indeed. Here's the QR code leading to the site and some links to the project. Thank you. Do you hear me okay? My name is Ilya Shapashnikov, and I have five minutes to sell my utility idea. Pentest Collaboration Framework is a utility to exchange, process, and store information, uh, the data about the pen testing projects. So, pen testing has, we, during pen testing, we gather a lot of project uh, information on the servers, domain names, open ports, comments, left by the testers, the services themselves, credentials, files, vulnerabilities, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of info. And you probably cannot mention it all on one slide. I had this task at work, and I knew that in a couple of months I will have a lot of such projects. So the only solution uh, I found was to create myself, because the, the ones I found on the Internet did not work. So I created the Pentest Collaboration Framework as a utility enabling to you to uh, collaborate with other utilities like uh, Nmap to send XML to Nmap to work with networks and subnet the servers. And a key thing was that you can have a number of teams, like blue team and red team, and they should not have any access to the red team project. So using these collaboration framework, you can place it on the internet and work together. But you know, 
managing the rights. The vulnerabilities that we found need to be edited, need to be monitored, and of course the notes by the testers, the files that they found, everything should be attached to the projects. General information, it's programmed on Python v3, 3.9, it's cross-platform, it can be run anywhere where you have Python interpreter. It's uh, cross-platform. It uses cross-platform libraries. It's portable, so you can you know, put it on a, on a flash drive and uh, uh, open by double click. It has open source on GitLab and some statistics on uh, the amount of time it took database it uses sqlite 3 i know it's slow but it supports postgres so if you want and you can just change everything in a config 23 utilities and map pursuit and so on so that how does this system the uh, user space system look we have our config our logs our templates of vulnerabilities of or vulnerability substitution tokens, API tokens. If you have a person whom you don't want to trust with the Shodden API token and uh, you don't want him to use it, you just add it. And, you know, without knowing the token itself, he can use it. And user information. And, of course, the teams, the admins, and the projects that can be attached to both users and the teams themselves so that everyone in the team has access. Here's one of the screenshots. Here's how I build the graph. We are improving the, of course, the look and feel. That's how we attack, that's how, how we add the rules. We have a connection from an Apple computer to Linux computers, and you can attack some PC on 2222 AP. So now we play standoff and we have huge networks there and uh, of course it was useful for us to build those graphs. And it's very convenient. So why did I decide to create one? Why did I not find any alternative solution? So here is the table of uh, uh, the closest one was the layer framework. And its main issue was it's written on Java. It needs to be uh, rebuilt every time after patching. And the second issue was that their build was uh, not really buildable for uh, on other machines. So you would not be able to build a new version with all the needed utilities support for half a year. So. Um, Python is portable, and SWS is also portable, cross-platform, free, and it's not outdated. I understand you know, at some point in time I will stop developing it, but the positive thing in this is that as Python code is quite convenient, it allows the developers to add their own functions. It's very template-based, and uh, you can integrate with other utilities. There's also a data export capability, uh, and it's used quite often. So if you root the hashes and uh, add them and put them to the IP addresses, then it has a chat. It's more of a feature. And an important criteria was that the utilities were aimed at managers, not at tech specialists. And it was a big issue for a tech forge, why we didn't choose it. The API being used as Swagger API and also the vulnerability templates. And there's some experience using it. It exists for like half a year. It has 60 stars on GitLab. 130 people in the utility chat used in the current work process, and I presented it on different conferences. Your questions, please. Uh, 
It's uh, less of a question, more of a thank you. I started using this utility on the last standoff, and I use it on this standoff, and it's very convenient. And I did not have any questions using it. It's really, truly useful thing. Thank you for your presentation. It's really interesting in terms of how you use it practically in this framework. Did you look at uh, third-party services integration? Did you use vulnerability analysis, open source solutions, defect dosher, to take some part of work from them and maybe load some something into them. Yeah, I did. But my concept is that I can run the service on the internet and other users, not only me, will be able to use it and it will be safe. If we connect to other services using REST API, we allow arbitrary users to connect to some API addresses. So that will create issues with uh, SRF because we have network requests for arbitrary network addresses. So this might work for administrators, and I looked at the dodger. But but the question I I asked was about the big part of results aggregation from different tools, understanding them, pushing them into one single concept. And he probably created a number of plugins. And the other part would have to do with uh, you know merging this all. All you need to do is pen testing. So the part that has to do with aggregating the reports and scanners. There are solutions, open source solutions that, that enable gathering, deduping uh, of this all. So maybe you can add some feeds and reach them. Maybe you have two services where you concentrate on what is lacking. And by the way, thanks for this great table that explains a lot. There's another issue. The goal of this development was to help the testing, the pen testing team. And if we aggregate and monitor, that's more for a blue team when you monitor whether the vulnerability was fixed or not. So yeah, you can go back to this project. And uh, people usually come back to, to work with us. But our aim was more on a technical specialist working during the pen test. So things like aggregating vulnerabilities are quite rare with them. One more question. Do you have some offline cache? It's a web app, right? Sometimes, especially you know, in uh, uh, pen tests, uh, you know, internet availability is a hard question. Local caching uh, might be needed with uh, synchronization. Well, um, local hash, local cache, is not available because it allows the users to add any amount of file, uh, of data into the database. Imagine you had one gigabyte of data and uh, uh, the database uh, would, uh, you know, uh, this will enable us to DDoS the, uh, the system. How does it connect with being offline? You talk about the integration with some offline service. So your solution should help the team that works on an object Internal, for, for internal logic, for example, to connect the knowledge of all of them to move further to the goal. Sometimes 
the internal pen test would not allow you to give the data back in real time and upload it to the system. So the question was, if you have a gigabyte of data, how do you upload the data? Well, I cannot answer in general. The user can go from an IP address to an IP address. There's also a function for multiple addition of different types of data in different formats, because many testers like to just, you know, make notes in a notebook. And you can add a lot of data, like credentials with the passwords or the hash adding ports, hosts. So if they if they want, they can batch upload this. I understand that solution that your solution implies the internet availability, right? I do my local version and I have uh, the search functionality to search by IP addresses and it's a flexible setting so that I export those lists from one PCF instance to another utility instance and work with it. So it's present there. Not all the data can be transferred this way, though. All the data can be transferred because the, 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 the format is flexible. A bit of feedback. Uh, we've used this utility as part of our practical activity compared to Dradis. It's a very interesting solution. We use network monitoring especially for big network sizes. The issue here is when the network is big and if you integrate, you cannot import all the data into the utility. And map scans or max patrol scans are better in that sense for higher loads and using more of uh, that, you know, Postgres, Postgres style things. So it's not a student project at all. And the suggestion would be maybe to add some Dradis like capabilities to upload and uh, download the whole project and uh, putting it on another instance. So this is a very useful thing and if you can implement it, that would be great. Because with the pen test, when uh, the group arrives on the spot, on site, you need to publish some data later on a local machine and work with the data to you know, uh, ensure the whole the whole process works. And I'm glad that we have such such guys like you. Regarding exports and export and import, it's planned for quite a while. I added this on GitClub. And I'm thinking on how we can avoid the deletion of the host and uh, avoiding uh, with with big with huge amount of data with GitLab. The solution will be that I am, will change the library, the uh, database. Uh, for working with databases, and they will be object-oriented, and um, I think this will improve the speed. Thanks. And one more comment. There is 
an important point for the red teams and as you participate in the standoff first network monitoring tool based on the network map to highlight and uh, visualize the hosts that we work with because some hosts some services are not visible because at some point in time they are not available and we know nothing about them so when the person works with them he says yeah I've implemented this function and uh, new hosts new ports arise so some function that will run continuous monitoring is important. It's not implemented in some places, but that would be a good thing for the future. That would be a killer feature. Yeah, let me give you a comment. I have some development rules and the utility itself should be published on the internet and of course such monitoring system will not allow be, not be allowed if it's uh, put on the internet so probably that will be another more separate module that will be talking to the utility through the the API sending the data it has captured but not in the utility itself thank you Unfortunately, we are running out of time and some feedback to the people giving feedback. Guys, this is open source, you know. Do your requests, write some code, improve it. I'm glad that those are not uh, just, you know, abstract things with uh, lab work uh, by the guys uh, lo looked at by a couple of people. This is a great thing that is used by, you know, people in the audience. And if we have feature requests, then it's alive and it will keep developing. We are a bit over time. And thus we decided, together with the uh, jury, we have prizes for you. And I wanted to tell everyone in this room, this was the first con contest of this type. Uh, but we will continue doing this together with the um, avocational team and uh, if you have some young guys students school guys who'd like to create some security projects or open source projects let them participate this will clearly be noticed and a small announcement there are some t-shirts there please feel free to take them thank you thank you indeed